officially call to order this Duval City Council Committee of the Whole for Tuesday, January 21st, 2020. It's now 535. Um, I talked to Council Member Brunicki, and she will be here about 6 o'clock. So we'll have her for part of the cow and all of the council. Um, first item uh, is uh, good of the order. And we can just go around the table if anybody has anything you want to share. And... Council Member Knapp. I'm going to keep it super quick because uh, Director Lynch has to be in here now. Is he? There he is. You are hiding behind him. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm too sorry. Well, I can't move. Okay. <laughs> He's hiding behind that coat rack. Yeah. Um, so I saw that the dog park's been closed due to many conditions, which I, I have one dog and my backyard's almost as big as the dog park, and it if, if a dog comes over to play with my dog, it's a mud pit in minutes. So I can only imagine. So one thing I was noticing on the little dog park discussion board, that there seems to be a lot of people that want to get involved. People are like, oh, can I bring in some chips and drop them in? And um, they'd love to see it open. Uh, or I, I just see this being an ongoing seasonal issue. So the question is, could we have a Friends of the Dog Park? Could we have some kind of mechanism um, for the community who feels really excited about the dog park to help um, take care. So that's just an idea. We don't have to talk about it tonight, but I just wanted to throw it out there that I noticed um, stuff's going on there. So I don't know if you. Yeah, the answer is yes. There, there used to be a Friends of the Dog Park. Yeah. But it's our first year, and not knowing what it will or won't do, and how easy it will be to or not to put it back. Mm -hmm. We talked about chipping it ourselves, and we just say, well, let's give it 30 days. Let's see what happens. See if weather turns favorable and then go from there. Okay. That's what we worked out that then. Okay. And I um, think Sean posted something when we closed it. He did, which okay. was great. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so I guess I'm just thinking long term how we're going to deal with this. It's going to be an annual cost. Um, and then vandalism at Big Rock bathrooms. So we talked about putting cameras in there and it's starting to get to the point where it might be way less expensive to just get some cameras in there than keep repairing it. I don't know. Question. We talked about it last week. So we have quotes for services up there. Mm -hmm. Some are static and remain on site. Mm -hmm. So you have to go search out what you're looking for. Others are streaming. And we we're not exactly sure if we have the like, infrastructure to get streaming. So we're looking into that. Because again, I asked, talk to admin, mm -hmm. city's largest investment or one of their largest investments. So probably live active cameras is a better choice than static. And then we did a budget note for 10 grand, which is why we started the selection process. But the quotes came in, you know, like 13-ish, and that's hard drive up there. You can't see it unless you go. And administratively, they were asking us to look into full full access. Okay. Kind of like we had authority because you can view it from anywhere. Yeah. So I wanted to call that service provider as well. Um, and I haven't spoken to the other folks yet. I know police station was actually looking for their own cameras because they had some vandalism on some tire slashing. So we want to just double check that we have, maybe we can get one system city live and then it all integrates much better. It may cost us a scotch more, but we're looking for that. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted an update. Yes. People and were commenting, we should, like, you don't have cameras up there? <laughs> we'll, we'll open it now. Yeah, we probably, the city should have considered putting it in at the time. I know it's always, it's okay. you can always do better, but yeah, they broke the soap dispensers off the wall. They threw them into the toilets. They jammed stuff in the toilets. There was drug paraphernalia in there, whatever. Workers actually broke through, you know, two sets of gloves, and you know, didn't get into the surface, but did, you know, scratch his, cut his skin a little. So he had to call the doctor, make sure he had shots. Good thing he's a volunteer firefighter somewhere else, so he's up to date on this shot series. But it's kind of a nightmare. So filed the report with the cops, and it is still closed. We'll talk about opening it tomorrow, since now we're back in regular schedule. It's rented. And we want to have the people who didn't mess it up continue to. Steve, is it closed at certain times of the day? I mean, yeah, it does get it's locked up. So it has auto locks just like the depot. Part of the issue, too, which we're working out and getting some quotes on, is better access control to those. Because right now you physically go into a closet and it's like an old thermostat. You, you set a dial with a clock on it and that's when it locks. Mm -hmm. But our systems out there that can be tied to your, your lighting, because you know if it's not rented, you shouldn't have it open, right? Uh, it's, so we're looking into other controls. Since it is, you know, it's highly used. Alana and Sarah are getting rent requests, like, starting to overlap, so we're running out of time uh, for rent rentable time, which is good. But, yeah, because if we don't open that back up, we've got to get a port copy and all sort of stuff, so. 
Yes, we're looking at our options. <clears throat> it's fixed mounted and labor intensive at the moment. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else for the the order from council? Really quick, I sent this email earlier um, with the next six months worth of council chats. Um, so just in case you didn't have a chance, I won't read through all the dates because it's in your email and you can look at that. The next, but I just will say the next one is next week, Monday, January 27th at Grateful Red from 10 to 11. And I have changed it. So in case you didn't get a chance to read the email, I decided to change to one hour time slots. We can always stay longer. Um, but I've just noticed I looked at the other cities and what they were doing and they just kind of condensed it to that one hour. I think it makes it easier for council to try and make it. Of course, like I said, you can always stay longer and talk, but just try to get, really get people there at a certain time just to help save us a bit of time. But I'm always happy to extend it a little more too. If, just depending. In my experience from going to them, I feel like people either come initially or they don't, you know? So it's just to try and save a bit of time and um, yeah, we'll see how that goes, and we can always switch back to something else. So just let me know if any of you can make it to those. You can email me later about it. Thank you for that. Yeah. Anyone else? <laughs> yes, <Yeah. Okay. laughs> Send your <Or> city clerk. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to let you guys know I am going to be in Alaska during the next council meeting. So Stephanie Goodwin is going to graciously clerk for me at that meeting. So I expect a good report. Be nice. <laughs> um, and hopefully packets will be going out a little bit early. If we can get them done early, I would like to send them out before I take off. Um, and then. Uh, speaking on behalf of the Human Services Grant Ad Hoc Committee, just wanted to let you guys know that we received seven applications, um, and we are in the process of reviewing them and, and putting our matrix, your hard copies on your desk in there, um, to uh, start doing the review, and you should be hearing from someone about it at the next meeting. That's it. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the past or not, but a free resource to the city is GuideStar. And this, they're um, a clearinghouse for information on nonprofits. And you can go on there and you can see all their tax returns, um, if there's been any you know, issues with good standing. But it also, once you, know, it's a free, you can just register it for free. And then they also periodically issue um, sort of updates on what's going on in the fundraising environment. Which is interesting, you know. Um, so it's free. Guide Star. It's been out there for a while, and uh, it's designed for, you know, um, groups like the city and private investors that want to support groups. What was it called? It's called Guide Star. Thank you. Any other council members? Well, our first item on the agenda is department updates. Uh, we've kind of skipped over public works a couple of times, I think. Um, Director Manischewski has been ready for a couple of months before us, so he has the opportunity tonight. Uh, I don't believe we have police here tonight, so it only might be the one uh, presentation. So, Steve, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Steve Manischewski, Public Works. So this, some of this looks hopefully familiar. It's just going over 2019 on the work plan base. What we do, what we not do, and then what else could we add to the list. Um, so it was a, a fun year, a busy year. I think always going to be busy around here. Uh, this mouse. Yeah. Ooh, it's quick. So in general, Public Works Engineering Group, we develop, uh, participate in development management, and some operations, of course, uh, our own city projects and then utilities. Uh, I say utility support, i.e. Larissa and I are the engineering support for the operations side, as well as uh, you know, working on getting projects out the door for uh, construction. That is all in-house. We do use consultants. Um, but pretty, I won't speak for myself, but it's a talented group who does a lot for the city and with very little resource and is always uh, getting work done. For example, the bottom right is the new card reader, so 
And that had been a long-standing issue. And Dana may have been one of the auditors eight years ago who talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I went over well, her building was. department <laughs> revenue with her too once upon a time. Uh, but yeah, so this is our automated system. It's key coded. So if you don't have the right codes, i.e. the person and a vehicle, you can match those up interchangeably. Uh, but it will not fuel you, and then it auto-reads to the system in the building and data logs, so the days of paper, we're still using paper just to make sure we're not missing anything for the next first month here, but yeah, it's uh, a great check and balance, new fuel, um, deployment pump as well as meter on that too. Uh, so not very exciting, but considering we purchased this 10 years ago with half of it fed by a grant from King County, uh, Kathy Lambert's office. We save, not that we can't get the money back if we purchase at the pump, but we save uh, road fee, road tax, before we even pay it. So if we went to Shell, you pay the price, and you can collect all your receipts at the end of the year, and you can submit that for uh, tax reimbursement. But we buy tax-free for road, road tax in the state. Steve, by the way, I think this is fantastic. This is the kind of control you're looking for. Mm -hmm that it knows what vehicle it is. So is this all diesel? Do we have gas? This is all gasoline. So it's all gasoline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked at years past about an interval goal because 45, 545 has diesel and we have gas. So we probably should have some sort of interval goal for emergencies at least where we could trade fuel. Um, but yes, it is gasoline only a thousand gallon tank. And so it's above ground. Mm -hmm. We don't have it below ground. No, it's above ground at the treatment plant on that kind of north, mm -hmm. no, south uh, east corner. So how long do we know we need to do this? And we got it done. <laughs> you know, admin gave directions here to do it, so we did it. It's always been a funding issue. Nobody ever wanted to do it. So yeah, great job. Yeah, good job. Yeah. I'm happy. I think this is one. Yeah, and it was nice too. The school district actually has this in uh, Carnation, the same system. It was it's state bid. It's off the shelf. Um, great. Had a couple of issues putting it together, but you know, what doesn't? Uh, so anyway, we did a, a few things extra, the cell tower leases, extra audit work, kind of non-work plan related stuff, a lot of finance support this year. Um, we tried goats, which was fairly uh, cost effective. Uh, we can get better at it because we actually let them graze on some flatlands in there. You know, to be honest about what we could do better next time, like uh, flatlands we can do, let's let them do all the steep lands. Yeah. Not the flatlands and the steep lands, so little stuff like that. Uh, and just so you know, I ran into our mechanic who was happy to not have had to have worked over the last snowstorm a week or change ago because he was pretty much here around the clock last year. So with all the new plows and the sanding motor and all those units that were upgraded in the off season, we had zero call outs, zero needs, zero downtime on any of our machines. Uh, the spray bar, which we didn't replace, which is for the de-icing equipment, Needs to be replaced, but the crew wants to kind of design and build their own, so they'll probably do that this summer. Um, but yeah, outside of that, everything worked smashingly, and he didn't have to come in at all. He was literally here around the clock. Two in the morning, he was here. Woke up the next day at 10 a.m., he was here. He was constantly here, so. When is the dump truck? Okay. It's, they say February. February. Mm -hmm. The truck and chassis is at North End Truck in Everett. It's just in line for its plow and sanding unit and box. That means we won't have snow next month. That's not <laughs> I was told, like, this is great. I have the snow in the new plow. That is a good thing to, to have it waiting and then the yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Just to say, the community felt like the city did just a fantastic job this year. I mean, my street got plowed right away, which saved so much because yeah. before it turned to ice, and then even when you tried to plow it, it was like chunks and it was a disaster. So, anyway, it was. Everyone that I talked to just yeah. was very impressed. Now, they were uh, most of the community was very pleased to see the guys going down streets. Mm -hmm. I only had to drive one shift, two shifts this year, so that was fun. But it was daytime, I didn't have too much night work. Um, but yes, we tried to hit it hard, and it was really good that it ended when it did mm -hmm. because the guys were getting pretty punchy at the end of the week. So, granted, there's only seven, then you can add Sean and I for. Eight and nine, and that goes quicker, and you're going around the clock, mm -hmm. keeping people functioning. You get a little punch drunk after hours, and and you may hear people complaining why there's two guys in a rig, that kind of stuff. Safety-wise, you know, policy in the dark after hours, it's two guys in a rig. 
Uh, we will run singles during the day, but it is driving and controlling the plow. They are not autonomous. There's two separate controls, right? You're driving a car and you're also driving the plow unit itself. So up and down, left and right. It's got a like, kind of a remote control, like a video game. So that's why we typically have two people in a rig. We will go onesies if we have to. Um, so they even let me do it by myself. Sort of plus it's kind of ongoing, but nobody really thought about it. I want to handle a ton of that. The Overland Stevens. Uh, we don't have a final bill yet. I don't want to jinx that road, but we should be pretty far under budget on that. We're still questioning the county how, but they say they're done, they're done, I guess. Um, so and on the right, just that was last year's snapshot of the project list. So we tried to just make notes. What's underway? Um, Kennedy Drive is going out for bid any day. Um, I'm not sure if I've informed you guys. Biosolids is out for bid for hauling. So right, the biomass that comes off the plant. Um, we have a usually a two-year contract on hauling that. <coughs> contract is up, so they're just operating under the same unit tonnage and taking away, and we're quoting that out. So I don't know what to expect. I'm sure costs will increase. They typically don't go down with trucking, but Fueling seems to stabilize and, and work out. So, so you call them up and do they come in to pump the biosolids? Um, it depends. Typically twice a week. Twice a week. And where do they take it? This goes to Eastern Washington to a certified field. So yeah, there's a lot of paperwork on cradle grave. So it is not, um, if it was dried, it can go to a field we apply now anywhere. Uh, but it is not dried, so it is fairly moist. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It kind of looks like coffee pudding. So it's 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 only like 12% solids. It's very wet, right? So it's uh, good material. But it goes east. Now it's licensed to the yeah, state. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, the guy, the plant going. Um, but yes, uh, it goes east. It is applied to fields. It has to be applied to the field and worked. I think it's a t one or two year term. And then once they clear these plots for time, you know, they turn it and move it, and then they sell it to other, other farms. So it becomes um, like a manure. We call it human manure, but no I remember um, on my tour uh, the discussion about how there really aren't that many vendors that do this. Mm -hmm. And so it's, um, it's a tough thing when you bid it. Uh, I don't know if other people are aware of that. It is very tough. There's, it's hard to get licensed by the state because of all the paperwork, and mm -hmm. you cannot do a lot of things. It's very few things you can do with the with the waste. So, uh, we do have two folks engaged, which is good. So it's good to have competition. Uh, and the one hauler actually, who we hadn't used before, is been talking. Um, so most of the PMs do bid the work for all the departments. So Sean's handling this one. And right now, this one group, besides ours, uh, hauls for King County solid waste, so they have a good track record, and they were just confirming a couple things. Um, but yeah, hopefully we get two quotes, and the, it'll be interesting, I, know, I guess I shouldn't say more until we get the quotes in, because some of them offer other things, but I'm not good to go. Uh, water comp plan, telemetry, I'll be coming to you soon with an update. Uh, we had our Department of Health, it's called a sanitary survey, actually conducted by Department of Health today with staff, so it's about a half a day exercise. They go over all your reports, they go over all your plans, your water plan, and then they want to see all your facilities. They do a lot of investigations, so they were uh, really good. Um, but we do need to work on our computerized controls and connectivity, which is high on their priority list. So we get a report out of them. There's usually it's kind of like an audit. There's levels of good, medium, bad. So I don't think we've had a, a finding or anything like that ever. But they always offer some strong suggestions or things that they they like to see that other places do. Um, so it was good, very informative. But my point being, telemetry. We are working on that in conjunction with the water comprehensive plan, so we'll be talking to you guys about that soon. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm just kind of looking at the list, and mm -hmm. I guess this is, maybe I'm jumping ahead, so stop me. 
Um, I know doing the asset management analysis has been on the table for a really long time. And um, my question is, do you think that that is something that will be done with at least preliminary information before we start our 2021 <coughs> budget discussions? And if not, my question would then be, what, um, because you guys do do a ton of stuff, what is our alternative, what, what would the alternatives be to get that work done uh, so that we have that information? Because we see it with the facility stuff now, right? We don't, we don't have that asset analysis, and until we have that, we can't really be doing the, the longer term forecasting that you know, mm -hmm. is long overdue. And that's not, I mean, it's just been out there. Why don't sure. we do it forever? Probably since before you, you know, when you were here the last time. All right. So, um, yep, good question. So, uh, we did a work planning session last week with Public Works, and I have worked, uh, talked to Larissa. Again, your question was something to come off the table to put something on it. That's right. So I asked her just to hand a lot more of the development review duties off to the consultants. It's 100% doable, and she can free up some of her time, so she's working on that. The water is in the system and operational. Sewer is mostly there. Storm is mostly there, so it's just finalizing that. I bet storm will be next, and then the treatment plant and sewer will be last, because there's so many. They're trying to in inventory every part of the plant. Which is just a ton of parts. Yeah, who is responsible for the, the rest of the city assets? I mean, maybe that isn't even public. I don't works. think it's on the list to do. So nobody else is looking at the other city assets that. I'm not sure it was intended. replacement analysis. Correct. I'm not sure that was the original intent. So oh, I mean, it may not have yeah. been. I'm just asking the question. Mm -hmm. So then, then, the, then the question changes, right? Mm -hmm. Then the chain question becomes. If there's assets that need to be analyzed sure. and trended out for replacement analysis that aren't in your wheelhouse, who does those things? Yeah, or how we put it in the system. Yeah. So I guess that would Phase be a two. question for for you because if we don't get to those bigger numbers, I mean we have a pretty incomplete picture when we're forecasting. So I'll wait to hear from you and hear. Yeah, I don't. I don't really believe, thoughts. I don't that. believe facilities are on the to-do list or yeah. parks. And yeah. you know, besides the tree plant, the ball field is a big asset. Mm -hmm. Does that software have the capacity? I don't know. I would yeah, imagine. I'm curious. Like the furnace is this old, just kind of some mm -hmm. type of way right. to check life cycle and add in. Probably. So you think potentially the software has. I mean, it may need more script writing from the okay. provider, but. What's this up? The we the city chose Hackenbach. We're talking about Hackenbach. Mm -hmm. Which I believe Mary's will use Hackenbach. Yeah. I think was, I mean, and so when you're talking about the system, you're talking about getting it into GIS. So everything is in GIS. It is then implementing into the Hackenbach module. So there's asset tracking, tagging, data for you know, page of assets. I'm not sure the strength of information out. Obviously, it can collect and share what's there, it would then be up to us to figure out how to transpose that into what we do when. So I don't know if it's that powerful a tool other than tracking and, and keeping and gaining information as we go and grow. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Will it do things as much as, um, like you ended up replacing all these meters out there. Mm -hmm. Will it inventory all of that type of stuff so that we have a future plan on replacing of meters? I, I, it'll I, it'll I, asset tag every information that you put in. Like, yes, just we like have the, meters in it. Just like the one uh, Puget Sound Energy is doing right now. They've got a whole we can read it. Okay. Yeah. Well, to some extent, I mean, the GIS system has mm -hmm. a lot of this information in it in terms of yeah, the base you from, have, yeah. where when it was put in, you know, and that kind of tells you that. The I'm not sure the asset tags the city implemented in the GIS system, so most of the asset tagging information is in ActiveAll. The line work and all the information came out of GIS, but yes, you could probably go either way. But you could, I mean, like if, if want, I mean, you could, if you wanted to know how many catch bases you had, you'd go to GIS and 
yeah, pull that up and right. that would happen. And you, you know, the secondary system sits on top of that right. and then just, you know, you were there, you did something, it records that. I mean, I guess it could add conditional information, but um, I don't know. I think it's hard with the, the holistic asset management to some extent because it's always going to, I mean, there's, there's going to be, a, I think, from my experience, it seems like there, be, there could be a perfect state where you plan for everything. And um, that would be way more expensive than most people would, would be willing to pay for. And right. I think, so to some extent, you, you know, are kind of balancing on that assessment. I guess so. I guess it would be. I mean, the more information you have, the better. But because uh, it'll be, a, I mean, it'd be a huge number. But when you say huge number, you mean a huge replacement number? Yeah, like if you oh, yeah, if you absolutely. modify, I mean, it's a, it's you know American bridges. I mean, that's federal government can't find enough money. No, no, you'll never find, you'll never have enough money for everything you have to replace. It's just, it's just understanding. I think the uh, under, understanding. The big picture, and then figuring out, you know, I don't want to use the word low hanging fruit because it's not mm -hmm. just that, but figuring out sort of what incremental high priority things do you have to stay up on all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, in, you know, part of why I come back to this is, you know, we have this number in our capital plan $12 million of street work that we don't really have a strategy for. So at some point, we have to have at least a little more clarity about what the collective information, you know, what the collective list of things might be. Mm -hmm. In a way, dollar amount doesn't matter at that point. It's more important to know where your vulnerabilities are than anything else, it seems to me. But I'm not a utility <coughs> person. You're a utility person. I'm a, I'm a building person. Well, yeah, I mean, sometimes the practice of utility people is same. It's probably similar to like the practice of bridge people. Like it's there's you don't always you know replace everything when you. But well, you can't. Should you, you can't? Should. Right. Yeah, you can't. So you just figure out where your 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 risk points are. Stephen, this is just very glad to be here for a whole hour. Right. No <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll keep that rough history going. So uh, we just had to ride it, of course. One of the general questions is about small attractive assets and one of the challenges you have in a city where you have these remote locations is you know you're not going to have equipment delivered to city hall where they tag it <laughs> so it arrives over at utilities and public works and and so the, the question is do we have an internal system for it could you have most of the assets yeah i would be mean, so how's that work for us or is it working project? <laughs> no, I'm just trying to nicely say. So whatever the the issues were on the audit with Public Works, there were two items. One was not, two of them were not at that location, and the value of one of them was garbage, and the other one I don't remember what it was that we had. So it wasn't again at that time. She didn't want to go into another site to see it, so she just wrote a good claim. <laughs> okay, whatever. I can. I don't want to go to the point yeah. anyway. Uh, so there's little things like that. But yes, the, the inventory is there. We do not have a good tagging system. The city had a tagging system prior. So in the core of every building or every room, there was a tag. And inside the room were the assets. Uh, so we probably should get back into that kind of business. Um, but as far as serial numbers, you know, we have spreadsheets and all that. So this was, and, it, and audits are a great time to just get caught up on that because you have to. So yeah, one of our, it worked out perfect, one of our guys had some light duty because of a surgery, so he sat there and hammered it all out, and he went around the shop with the auditor and found everything, but again, one was a, a junction box for uh, electrical outlets for large scale ones, and it was in the stage. That's the only thing she couldn't find, and then the other item was a mower, which was up at the ball field in the garage. So. Thank you. Yeah. And that, I think that's a bit of something that every, or a lot of cities are dealing with. Yeah. We do uh, something that's changed where I work over the last two years. Yeah. That we've uh, created a more robust system where we just every year we go through the checklist, find everything, make sure the numbers are there. 
<laughs> well, it's good too to put one person in charge. That way, there's no questioning who did what to when. That guy's on it. So, oh, this is a sensitive button. Uh, so, just a couple things within NPD, within engineering itself, uh, stormwater NPDES compliance. Uh, Larissa and Sarah handle that in the office. Gavin is our field rep for storm. Uh, talking about active development and asset management. Uh, got us way ahead on this slide already. So water is up and running. And then the other two you can see are there. Um, right. So I don't know if everybody knows what the PDES is. National <laughs> Pollutant Discharge Elimination System. So it's stormwater. <coughs> That's federal uh, permit requirements that we as a, uh, I think we're a stage two, what are we at? Stage two city. Phase two. Phase two city. Thank you. Um, so, Originally, however many years ago, what, maybe 10 years ago now for phase one cities? Maybe a little longer. They've seen yeah, a lot more compliance requirements uh, for stormwater management. Um, so yes, we are, we have the annual report, we have to, uh, accidents, discharges, whether they're you know, on purpose or accidental, like a truck accident during the snow, uh, Cherry Valley Road and was it 270 down there by the dairy barn? Truck flipped over, you know, lost 25 gallons of gasoline on the street. So that's a that's a report. You know, DOE gets involved and the whole nine yards. So there's a lot of paperwork that comes with the NPDES compliance for our municipal stormwater uh, entity. <coughs> Excuse me. So Active Development is a service we use, the program we use for our asset management uh, tracking. What is, what's the, what are we looking at here? That is a screenshot out of Activov on the, uh, that must be the water asset with probably valves or hydrants turned on and then the main lines. And the only reason I can tell it's water, not sewer, is because there's a diagonal line between uh, right yes. here, which is 270 to the Big Rock, and then uh, 143rd and 3rd. Yeah, there's some serious issues with uh, Activov's dots and lines. I would, yeah, and the color, there's not a lot of color coding implementation, which I have asked for some changes on too. So it can only get better. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Sometimes you get what you pay for. Yeah. So. Yeah. The good news is it's, uh, it's functioning. I think, mean, like you're experiencing, there are always things that could be a little better. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, if you have an asset on for maybe it's a meter and a hydrant, and all it is, everything's a dot. So. No offense to the dot at the table, but we need something better than dots on our screen. Yeah, so the, uh, the, these, are, the these are the work right. orders right here. So those, if, you know, there's the, like the work order pegs. Yeah, yeah, work order pegs, and these are the assets, and obviously the line. Then when you go in here and you put a record on there, it'll change color and they can right. pull it out. So yeah, this is a little, this is a, a work order that's been completed. Because it's just a little color coded. This is a work order that was open because it's still red. So you, you can visually see kind of quickly if there are a lot of tasks in process or close out and whatnot. But you can so are you guys trying to put um, time into work orders? When they're doing them, yes. So they're, so like, did you guys do like a snow route work order? No. Or a, like something like that? We did not. The guys will code that in the spring route. It, looking at this just reminded me of a conversation I had with Public Works a long time ago about Lake Rasmussen. Mm -hmm. that, I can't talk right now. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and about how we didn't really have baseline um, uh, ecology information on it for a long time and you know, the phosphorus is dumping in there and blah, 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 blah. And I seem to remember that there was going to be, some, there was some, something somewhere you were going to start looking at that somewhere. And that might have been a Larissa mm -hmm. conversation Probably. too. Is that something for next year? Is 2020 as well, or is it? We're now. I mean, I'm just. Yeah, specifically curious. what you're actually thinking about. Yeah, well, right. Yeah. If I start looking at that, that discharge yeah. stuff, I'm there. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, discharge. Like. I don't know what we did or didn't promise on that. So we'll look at. I don't it. know that you even promised anything. I just remembered the conversation that we didn't have baseline information on it. And it showed up in also some discussion of it showed up in one of the uh, quadrant submissions um, that there wasn't any baseline information to evaluate gotcha. uh, you know possible impacts. So yeah, if you ever. Yeah, I that. think that that usually is. I mean, if it's not listed as something, you know, it, 
so the state would be aware if there was an issue. I mean, if they had an issue, they would tell the city because it's not part it's of water the city. state. Yeah, it's water state, and then state would inform the city that there's an impairment in that water body, and then subsequently you'd have higher standards for development around that water body. Um, it's likely there's just not a lot of information in it about it. Yeah, that's what state, I got. And then usually. So, so do you call the state and ask them to? I think it, it's kind of one of those things. I mean, does a do you city want to go out of a way its way to? Because um, it's not part of its system. It's a part of the state. So, mm -hmm. so it's like on. So the, I think so. Laura seems to think it means it's not a matter of the state. It doesn't mean the But so as far as baseline, I don't know. Well, if it's a creek, I mean, if it's a creek, I mean, it, that's pretty. It's the water body is there's a threshold in acres and then it's fairly it's fairly small. It's just under when we did our critical area update it was actually a discussion that we had. So I guess I'm a little confused. Do we want to know what the condition is of the lake or not? I mean We I mean if you go sample the lake it's gonna have it's gonna have impairments, but whether it gets listed or not is a whole other state process, and then whether you could actually seems this is my understanding. If if to get it to have standards be imposed upon the discharge that go into there, that's the whole other. It would have to be listed by the state just because you took samples and found it had some sort of impairment doesn't necessarily mean it becomes listed at that moment. I think it was more of a community concern yeah. versus a Department of Ecology concern based on the yeah. conversations I heard at least during our critical area update. And I think that just has to do with like during the summer, mm -hmm. you know, it gets those blooms. Mm -hmm. right. I'm sure it's heavily loaded with nutrients. Yeah, I, th I guess my, my thought would be that we could just generally tell people you shouldn't fertilize your lawn no matter what right. and without doing a bunch of sampling because it's generally going to be residential inputs that are yeah, we can always uh, sample if that's a program we were interested in. We can certainly talk about what it would take to do that, run that. There's people out there who will do that for you. The county does it for other agencies as far as water quality testing and sampling. So, yeah. Oh, this thing is Sorry. Uh, quick update just on what the development community has going on. So, preliminary plaque processes. Paper, nothing is in construction yet, so the, those numbers are, and I can, I think Jody has this on the drive, so if you guys want to copy with this email out, so you don't have to make copious note, amounts of notes, but um, 163 units in preliminary class process. This is not like pre-apps if somebody came in with a thought on doing something that isn't really a formal application yet, that is not on here, but there are plenty of those as well. So about 163 units in P-plot process. That means they're fairly uh, serious. They actually have engineers and sensitive folks and tree folks working on a plan. Um, engineering review would be the approval process of the P-plot phase moving into construction phase. Um, right now, that is uh, Walden, the only one under that level of review. Uh, construction management, more of the what's been turned from P plot into engineering review and now engineering review and approval. So they're building and actually what we call turning dirt. Um, I did adjust the units since like North Hill has 20 units as of last week remaining out of the 112 that they had permitted. So that's, that's ongoing there. And then final plot, you have that coming in for Big Rock uh, phase B. And then do all the final plot of recently. So just so I don't get confused, because I've been tracking the development a long time, I just looked at your construction management. You have 143 mm -hmm. units. Mm -hmm. So when you you're one, that 143 means 67, 11, 45, and 20. Correct. Not the 112. Right. So it, so since I track everything from May of 2017 to current. Mm -hmm. um, because I keep it like it's a, a total, like it's a one big production thing. And that's how I always track to how many units are we against our, our uh, 1100 or whatever it is. Well, you're missing a button, you're missing Allen Street, it looks like it rolled off. Um, 
there's probably things that all have also rolled off. Of it. That's why I keep the running yeah. total list yeah. because then I never lose anything. Yeah. And Willow, you'll notice Willows isn't on here because they're right. kind of in a state of pause. Right. Power Hill rolled off. Right? Done. Yeah, but it's on my list. Yeah, see? Yeah, flats right. accepted, overlays done for final lift, and they are yep. then bond released. And then, like on Walden, you know, it's 206 units are in, but that doesn't include the multifamily. Mm. There's another piece that has it, yeah, because Walden can go up to 252. Uh, there's, well, I would yeah, defer just to, you so can have that on top of the it's, right. it's for the MUI section. Yes, yes. at some point yeah. they have Correct. That if they move it forward. Yeah, because I think you're allowed housing units above commercial, right? Right. Right. On any commercial parcel, including what is down on toll on big property. Yeah. 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 Right, right. So uh, when I look at Walden, for example, I always, in the back sure. of my mind, remember, oh, it, it's 206, but it could be this. It's, mm -hmm. So in my mind, I would think of it as a range. These are only just like what the actual numbers are, right. but right. we also keep track of like what kind of that probable yeah. number is as well. Like we actually have more than this that's in probable because we're having like general information meetings yeah, or right. pre-application right. meetings, but we don't like put those into the system until, you know, until the actual. Yeah, and you do track them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and, and you said you were going to get me an updated matrix at some, at some point. Um, and do we know when that might be? Is it like a... It's completed. It is completed. Okay, thanks. And we're not going to see the maps updated more than quarterly now. It's probably... That updated today and tomorrow. So we're working on it. So it'll be a report for... Count. It'll go in the written report for council so that everybody gets it. But I'll, yeah, we'll send it out by the end of the week. But it's going to be in the next council report. That way it's also a public-facing document. And it'll go... The map will go up on the website. Yeah, it's it's just I think it's good for us all to remember that it's, we should not expect that map to get updated more than quarterly mm -hmm. now, yeah. so that we always have realistic expectations about what's on the map. I'll put a caveat that to the, that though is if we got a large project in, we would update it. Okay. So in turn, I know that the, the you know, there was some shifting in terms of managing projects in CD versus in public, in public work. Mm -hmm. So, but it, how does that shake down to the review level? Is that still, that's still majority occurring in public works, I guess? So, uh, SDA did our work for a long time and they recently were uh, assumed by PACE. So PACE is still our development review engineer. Mm -hmm. So they, they, everything gets shipped out unless Larissa thinks she's gonna do it in-house. So, okay. and that's kind of the, the recent work of as we talked about work planning last week, hey, asset management, we gotta get it done. If we don't get it done, we're never gonna get it done, so what do we need to do? So we do need to you know, shift more of that, because she will do <clears throat> some of it on top of what the development group groups that we use are doing. Um, and it is somewhat specialized, so for example, like Pace will do you know, roadway geometry, they'll check the utilities as far as, the, you know, you have a profile, which is the bottom of that image there. Plan view up top, profiles in the bottom. So they're checking inverts, making sure slopes are meeting the minimum standards, um, that kind of stuff. Murray Smith will do our water system, so we'll, we'll run a model and make sure you know fire flows are gonna be met, we're getting the, the right amount of flow through the neighborhoods, there's no zone issues. Uh, Expo helps on the transportation side of things when necessary, so they're definitely more front-loaded and kind of preliminary setup as far as transpo goes, and then once you get into the hard civils, it's more of just pace and uh, staff. So Larissa's time, she can probably work 100% development review and be fully offset, but then we have no support from her for the yeah. utility side. And, and work. So the, that beginning portion, or the civils, still live in public works, I guess, mm -hmm. essentially, and then the post, then once it's they approved, our P-plats are pretty comprehensive too, so even though planning runs the P-plat process to get them you know, through CEPA and then their entitlements, we are using the development review groups to assist in that as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are we keeping up? With? Yes. Plan review, permitting? No. I mean, what's our biggest, what's our, what's an issue that council can handle that with? Because this is it's just, just balancing it all, I mean, that's the... It's so hard to, even like the Department of Health today, her, all that gal thinks about is, you know, 
engineering for water systems. Like, so we get to think about that, you know, one hour or two here a minute. We, it's, we do everything else out of this office. And she's like, oh, I get it. Like, so it was it was great to have you know her there and do her job. But it was good for her to come see that you know what we don't get to focus 100 percent of the three FTEs we have for water to water. Like, it's a balance. So <clears throat> just balancing development as well, you know, because there's always a tug on something. So I was going to make an observation about um, keeping up, which is that when we develop in the city we're accessing our existing infrastructure and investments and we're bringing in property tax revenue. And these are all projects that are already in the city, they have a right to develop here, yada yada. And so um, when we are able to process that, those, those projects in an efficient manner, we're actually helping bring in tax base that is otherwise undervalued. So, Putting aside all the debates around transportation and development, but looking specifically at revenue and generation, um, we're going to get more property tax from a developed piece of property than a one that's sitting there for, you know, not developed. So if we can't move things through the permitting process in an efficient way, we're actually losing money because um, we're going that stuff is going to get built. We're just delaying getting money. Where it's not a question about whether it's going to happen or not. Um, in city, they have a legal right to build. We have a legal responsibility to process them. So um, it's it's just it's just um, not a perfect place we're in, you know. But I I feel like it's important to just keep things moving as efficiently. If we're not keeping up. We really should look at what is it going to take to, to do a better job of keeping up because there's there's lost revenue in this equation as well. Yeah, and the bottom line is at some point or another, no matter how fast our developer review crews mm -hmm. can help us out, someone in the city offices have to final review everything. That's right. So that's exactly right. And there's. We don't just get to take it and ship it off to the utility district nearby. Yeah. So we have to not only think of all the, the surface stuff and access, we have to think of all the utilities yeah. as well. So, and that's where the whole group, you know, superintendent is very involved in preliminary review of all the projects and the details and, and whatnot. And then, you know, we're working with building on, you know, these new higher density units. They're so tight. And if they're multifamily, they trigger sprinklers. And then are we, do we have a preference? You know, our standards are kind of out of date. Do we like the flow through systems, which is, you know, where the water main and line in your home is actively connected to fire sprinklers in the home. So there's the stagnant water. So there's two separate systems. You can have a separate system for fire suppression. That is, it has to be, you know, backflow prevented and you have to do that work. And then there's the new ones that are, that are flow through. So there's no backflow prevention. It's more fluid in the home. And it's kind of the developer choice. So there's a lot of, you know, there's always something changing too. So. Well, yeah, because if you're just looking just at, at a very simplistic math, we get roughly $1,000 for every unit, just straight property. That's our cut of the property tax. You know, when you start looking at what you really get. Um, and for each unit. And so, if you've got a unit of land that isn't built, <coughs> and you're getting, you know, a fraction of that. Yeah. So as we're doing uh, the parks worker comps and looking at other alternatives to to staff, but we're budget no number three. Uh, one of my questions that finance is trying to help answer is, of the 400 units coming in, what does the city expect to have as far as general revenue from property? Because somebody pointed out to me, I don't know if it was other than Laura, the FYI, I remember you have two new parks coming in with Toll Brothers and then Rivas. Yep. So, and the guys are really happy to sit there and listen to that meeting. <laughs> so that was a work plan meeting. Uh, Steve, when did we see that position? Uh, Alana is getting quotes for the work to offset staff, so we're trying to keep it. Kind of specialty work so it doesn't cross over so for example the ball field 
So there are turf management companies, so we're getting a quote on managing the synthetic field turf at the ball field. And then on top of that, it would be to manage the natural turf at the ball field, inside the field space, one, two, three, and then ancillary to the park itself, so it's understood what it takes to, you know, if we were to quote out the whole field. And then you, we have another quote for uh, facilities maintenance of the restrooms, to take that off the to-do list. Um, and then one other park we thought would be a fair reach, uh, which I think was Judd Park, just to manage the, the grounds through a contract. Yeah. Just, um, I think when we were talking about it before and we had a conversation, I, our um, public works maintenance workers are highly skilled. And so I don't think that it was ever <coughs> our intention to go find the most expensive things to get it out to justify that we should hire someone in-house. Do you see what I'm saying? Like the, the intention was, you know, we do spend a lot of time doing kind of uh, you know, could you get a crew to come in and do Main Street, all the landscaping there, or just come in and do some of the stuff that you can just bring someone in, they got a bunch of workers, they got all the equipment, they can just get it done at a, you know, because some of these things seem a little bit silly. We do have our workers trained to do the field maintenance. We've spent a lot of money on the equipment and the training, and so we have that. So why would we bid out the most expensive pieces that we already have people trained to do. Does that make sense? Like how sure, does someone come and check on the bathroom through. every day when we have people that drive by there every day and instead quote out having someone so, outside contract in to drive sure. all the way to Duval to check a bathroom. I, I guess I'm just feeling a little bit like the cards are being stacked against having contract work if that's the way we're doing it. Uh, that's a totally fair point, but please look and think of the other side. We have to have something to quote specifically and consistently, right? So we have to, we're trying to give things out there that are going to be consistent throughout the year. Street maintenance is street maintenance, not parks. So my intention is not these parks were going to pull weeds on Main Street because that's technically streets. That's a streets FTE, it's not a park. So if we want to blur those lines, I'm fine with that. But again, maybe this is just a an off conversation at a cow on the expectation since I wasn't here to establish the budget last yeah. year or the notes or understand most of that. Well, so, there is other parks work. I'll use parks as an example. There is parks work that's more like come in, seasonal, let's get it done. Um, there definitely is more work in the summer. Sure. You could have a contractor come in and whip it out, you know. Uh, Part of the ball field, too, is the year round use peaking in the summertime while starting in spring, really, mm -hmm. that needs weekend work. So, you know, parks worker was not intended to be a Monday through Friday for every person. It was a, from my understanding, and the crew's hope is a Tuesday through, or a Thursday through Tuesday kind of thing that gets covered on the weekend, so there's no overtime, because we had overtime all summer mm -hmm. to go to the ball fields. Um, so I guess so. I just want, I just want an honest analysis uh, what piece could we contract out that would be most cost effective than having our very highly trained maintenance workers um, doing some work that you could contract out? So Not contracting out the most complicated pieces and the most expensive pieces. You're saying because the sunk cost of training the employees has already been spent? Yes. I would say if you are interested in a committee the whole topic on that, maybe set aside 15, 30 minutes, and we'll just yeah, we'll I, we'll I, mail I, out I, expectations I so I don't have to guess anymore. I can definitely sympathize with the fact that yeah. if you're trying to get a quote, <laughs> yeah. you need a finite. Yeah, it has to be finite to get a service quote, which we can just take all the milling off and make it, we can, but I would suggest we talk uh, yeah. at the next meeting and we'll just get the expectations set out. It doesn't okay. bother me. So, I, and I guess that you need that. I, yeah. I guess I'm just feeling like we're to. pulling off pieces that are fully intangible very pieces. What we're really looking to pull off expensive pieces. But I, I think to some extent, that some of that conversation yeah. did surround the new FT for the new park and for that um, big rock park. Sorry, <laughs> um, and a majority of the work there is those, you know, those aspects. I, I agree, I think it would be a good idea to 
to circle back. Absolutely. And, and um, yeah, I don't even guess anything. Just... I mean, parks and streets, uh, general fund. So. Technically, but we set aside specific resources for streets that go to the street budget. So I'm more than happy to blur those lines and set those targets if we want to. Then. Yeah, I think a discussion would be helpful. Yeah. Like, we have so much growth and adding parks and other things. I can't imagine that fairly quickly we need the employee. But I'd also like to see, you know, it's like removing some of the things from the plate, like mowing the street, the main street. I mean, that's a big project. Every sure. week, company can come and say, yeah, you know, they've got the equipment and we don't have to pay the retirement and L and I and you know how it is by uniforms Absolutely. and sick leave and all the other things. So I, I the more consistent they can get to it's economic development looks better. I mean, yeah, just, yes. but in my mind it's probably not either or. We we either farm it out or we hire somebody. I, I can't imagine we aren't gonna wind up at some point doing both. But I, I think there are a lot of companies that I come in. One follow up question. So on because we have two new parks that are coming online we, I wonder if we take those two park plans and bid out, not bid out, I shouldn't say it that way, but like what the maintenance would be of those new parks, if that would be helpful. And I know that can be a discussion and another, or if it's even possible, because they're not technically built, so we just have a set of plans. We're just planning it. No, I like that. I like the idea that, you know, when I mean, you can make a decision finite, and then, you know, in two years you got two more parks, and now you're right back where you were. So I think that planning ahead and looking what we need Evaluate the costs, and, and that's we had just spoken briefly. Where you know, I see the streets in a lot of ways as very similar to parks in the fact that a, a large part of the um, there's a large aspect of, of mowing, mm -hmm. but um, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll stop <laughs> and let's just carry it forward to the next thing. So, there's the other two parks we will be. Inheriting one has a lot of non active use in it, which is the Rio Vista one, so it's got some passive space. But there's trails and, and play areas and, and whatnot. And then, of course, Walden is on the right, which is three acres total of so space. Rio Vista's got what a court over the yeah, vault in the back, a, a left yeah, court here, trails around some kind of overlook pathway, and then another set of hardscape. Which I think they'll be coming to Planning Commission and Council for their park plan that has to get approved. It's nothing engineering is approving by any means or planning, so it's it's a community asset, so the community will, will be involved. And that traded hands, and I don't know how far they were down the rabbit hole last time. I know they had they went through. Yeah. I mean, they uh, did a community meeting, um, had a conversation with Planning Commission and Council. They didn't include it as part of their land use entitlement for subdivision, and so now they're coming in to finish that up. There was basically the space set aside and what approximately could look like, and so that's why you have that, and now it's time to um, hone in on the details. I think this also gets, I mean, we, we touched on the um, uh, NGPA ownership stuff, I mean, it, I mean, cl clearly the the um, Toll Brothers Park is a region is more intended more as a regional draw. Uh, this, the the Rio Vista one, you know, that's yeah, it. I mean, I've seen some of these parks uh, in Willows. I can't remember the name. These smaller parks. So there is a there is a point where it's like borderline, you know, a neighborhood park. And I think it's at some point might need to consider um, looking at you know having some of these parks be you know I don't know if it, it conflicts with the with our standards but be private parks or HOA owned parks um, because you start getting a bunch of these little parks it's going to be really hell mowing and uh, trash picked up it's playground maintenance yeah. Yeah, you get a court and stuff, but and and you wonder the utilization will be frequently mostly by the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Although I'm gonna make an effort to go to that part. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, just Duval Village done. I thought I had a slide for toll in there. Oh I did. Oh jeez at least. Uh, phase B and I guess a question for the group too. Um, 
three-touch rule. It is the second phase that we've discussed in the whole. I prefer just to come to when they're ready and, and hopefully process. If you would like three touches, I will start the three-touch process on phase B of toll because the commercial pads are done as well as what they call phase A, which is everything on the east side of Third Avenue. <coughs> so everything that they're just wrapping up is on the west side of Third Avenue. Council, what do you think? Is that something you want to see three touches or can we shorten it? I, I don't need to. I mean, I've been track personally, I've been tracking this project a long time, so even before being on council, so I don't need three touches myself. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with um, having three touches on it. And like we've seen a lot, so <laughs> it feels like, you know, it's just. I don't know that it would be sufficient, like what you're saying, and strategic to just process when you know it comes up and they're finally ready. Yeah, they're really close. Uh, their crosswalk was installed this last week uh, for Street L. So, Michelle, yeah, for what are your thoughts? Do you have a, any concern with shortening that up? I don't have comments. It's like most of the time, I, what we're really looking for is just you know, making sure the checklists are all done and we really count on uh, the expertise from Public Works to tell us when it's time. So I, I, I you've done lots of touches on this. Yeah. No, so I'd rather, I'd rather and, and I'd rather come when they're done. So yeah, yeah. I don't like coming and saying, well, they're almost done. Here's yeah. what it's going to be. Like, that's, it kind of belabors the point. And the applicants know it's, we're not going to approve it. That we're just explaining it. So it is nice to introduce something that hasn't been talked about before, but this is just a phase within the overall project. So, yeah. I mean, maybe if there were two touches, of yeah, like you could I'll probably say, put it in the hey, packet next week. And here's kind of things yeah. we're watching out for that might be helpful. Yeah. But I, three touches might be. Well, thanks for ever asking. Yeah. We, we are trying to find ways to make our part more efficient, and uh, mm -hmm. I think we're where everyone feels comfortable, we can shorten that up. Can I add just one thing, sorry, to this, and Steve and I talked about this a lot last year in the legislature. The legislature has made the opportunity for final plats to be administratively done. So when we update our administrative section and permit processing, we'll bring that forward as an option of consideration for planning commission and council. Uh, so MNO, that is actually building of the Tolt 2 main line in 1962. Is so that you on the hill? It is not. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was a, a good dozen years prior to me being even a thought okay. anywhere. Um, but yeah, that, just some crew hot. The crew is implement, in, important to everything we do, but they are doing everything. So just to get them to help out and, and you know, purchasing vehicles and equipment and, you know, helping with facilities. And on top of their daily work, there's enough daily work to keep them busy without even having to think about forecasts kind of work and, and doing high level stuff. So, uh, you know, having Joe as a supervisor and the two leads has certainly helped workflow and getting and getting work done. Um, it's easier to segregate the work and, and give the guys little teams to get stuff done. Um, Summer helpers, we intend to hopefully do the same thing we did last summer. You know, we have three approved, 692 or 93 hours um, per the agreement that we just blend into 692 times three divided by however many people we can get to do the work over the summer. So um, it worked out really well last year. Uh, you know, that one week off, great, take a week off, it's not paid, you're just part time, but we're still getting tons of, of you know, mowing done. So. Um, reorganizing the shop, uh, it may not be much to everybody else, but it certainly helps the guys uh, get more work done. Moved a lot of the materials out of the shop since the shop at Stella and you know, um, Railroad is fairly confined. There isn't a lot of space and we have a lot of materials down there that we've moved to the treatment plant. So sand and gravel, we've, we've moved to the plant on the side and it's freeing up space for them to be a little more creative in how they do work down there. Uh, you know, meter installs, I didn't get to update the number. Mike said we're over 400. And one quick flip. Uh, I thought I had another map. But, um, I'm amazed how, watching how efficient they are. Yeah, in. it really helps too without weather, of course, but 
one guy will go ahead, you know, on Friday or Thursday right. and kind of prep all the meters that they're going to hit, and it just helps them just, you know, fly through neighborhoods. And we are about half done with the city because anything that is new, like North Hill and some of the newer plots, their meters are up to standard. So when you look at the color-coded map, I thought I put it on here, but maybe I'll get to it. You can tell like we're about halfway done, which is fantastic. Um, but we have not done it over the last handful of weekends just because of all the other, all the other OT. Uh, so we'll start that up next weekend again and, and getting those uh, installed. Uh, there's a the little goats. And by the way, we had so many people drive by the goats, it was insane. Like, they just loved them. So. They're a big attraction in the Sequoia Highlands. They use them all the time yeah. in those huge hills. Mm -hmm. But they also have a problem with people feeding the goats yeah. and they shouldn't. So, but it can't be fun. Just, like, yeah, she had her signs that way. <laughs> yeah, and people just came and looked at them and were just like, <laughs> um, did, did you see it when they broke out in the Sequoia Highlands last year? Yeah, it's like every year. Every so year it happens. Good. <laughs> Uh, just some of the other stuff that you know we have to take care of. Once we do the capital projects, we have to you know monitor them. So we are using a third party now to help us manage and monitor that. So we have inspections annually, and then making sure all the work is being uh, kept up to the mitigation standard required. Uh, you know, design work we do a lot of it is you know in this, the inception of it is in house. Of course, the final details we you know rely heavily on consultants, but. Um, Main Street and the Rapid Flash and Beacon, Beacons we're working on with WashDOT. There's a little conflicting information out of them, so we're trying to get those uh, approved so we can install them soon. Uh, Kennedy Water Main should go to bid at any time. We're waiting for one bit on the specs out of a consultant. Um, we're working on until uh, 275th and the PSC Access Trail. We're going to have notices go out to the homeowners pretty soon, set up meetings, and just inform them of what is going on. Dang, you guys got a pool. I was going to Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's two in there. Uh, told to, uh, still slow and steady. Um, finding out that the water may, may not be an easement. So, you know, saw the picture in 62. They were having a good old time going where they thought they needed to go. Um, so we're still working on some of that. It's cart, it's like chicken and egg too, because PSC won't approve the alignment unless they know it's in the actual easement. If it's off easement, we have to rewrite the easement. So we're working on all that. It's a joy. That's just the paperwork to get it started. Uh, our own little city projects, the patching was you know, a great success. Already completed. Uh, the street light issue is slow and steady. Each of the little color codes is uh, fairly archaic management, but this is the best we could do with PSC giving us nothing. So Sean kind of put together zones and is tracking them as they go. Um, Baton Road, uh, again, completed and under budget. We're hoping to get the final numbers as soon as possible. Main Street's done. Uh, final closeout has just happened, so that is huge. Getting that off the, the work work table and out of the, there's still finance numbers to, you know, final payment and then retainage release and all that. So that's all uh, in process and underway and done. Um, we're doing water and sewer comp work, including fees. Uh, there are a lot of things in the comprehensive plan itself that are uh, part of the Department of Health Sanitary Survey. So, um, you know, the new assessments that are required for uh, on here. No, but for water resource inventory and then security is a big thing coming out. So we're doing that with the update. Uh, I may not have updated this, but capacity evaluation work's done, mixing studies done. I think we probably owe a report to the group uh, or uh, Made the whole or something, but and to uh, like Akilov and Larissa would, would just work into her schedule. She would be more than happy to pull Akilov up, up at like, like a cow and just show you guys what's going on within it. Um, and we are still working on things at the plant, so UV is still in process. We kind of had to take a step back because if we do the UV work and then the reuse pumps at the plant, um, right now we have no way to get to them. 
So we're working on kind of an access system um, to be built in the lower building. It's the one uh, way down here. Uh, everything's in the basement, so we're looking at a small crane system, uh, very elementary, some racking, uh, like a winch, just to get things up and out of the basement a little more simply, help control costs and remove any ambiguity for bidding uh, and that kind of stuff. Dog Park, which you noticed, uh, great, great community project, people love it. Uh, you'll hear from Jeff who wants to talk about the food forest, pea patch. That'll be just on the north side of the, of the dog park. <coughs> um, Taylor Landing, that is uh, up and running. The ball field, again, we can email this around. These are the registered <coughs> renters we have for the site. So, quite a list, um, again. Or is part of the balance of use of the field? Yeah. Currently, yeah. yeah. It worked out okay. Because I know there was some controversy and yeah. concern about who had the rights to it. No, the groups are working uh, really well together. We have one conflict coming up between La Crosse and Cascade. So I might be part of that. We're not a problem. We'll try to work it out. But they, yeah, La Crosse is strange, right? They don't need, they can work within half the field, but safety wise, do you want to be on the other half of the field <laughs> while they're bringing La Crosse balls around? So, <laughs> we're we're going to look at some scheduling on that. Uh, we go with the yeah. And I don't handle any of our scheduling. The league schedules. I was the coach. I show up on the field that they ran. Um, so, yeah. That was, uh, it's, and it's like, it's not little kids, it's like the high school boys. It's like, oh, yeah. those balls are going to be working over. Zipping around. Yeah, right. What can go wrong? <laughs> We uh, park, so we have a skate park, that's done. You have a dory roof in the packet, and that is expendable upon approval. And Laura has graciously let me step out so I can run a practice in 13 minutes. Um, and she's going to take care of that one tonight. Uh, I thought I had more on there, something I'm missing. Maybe it's coming. Uh, just don't forget every year we get to do the tip, so. Gauging, you know, we'd like to have it turned in by July, which means the last meeting in June. But I think we want to probably start in May to talk about tip work and, and priorities and roll that together now, especially that we do have a formed TBD that is funded. So just things to start thinking about. And to be clear, too, the funding starts in April, but the TBD is not on the books yet. It's passed to be initiated in April. Um, depot's underway. We got prioritization, which we're, we'll take a look at when we talk about tip in general. Uh, TBD, we're starting to think about what that means. You know, by my math, I don't believe we're going to do anything in year one, which won't even be a full year. So we'll prep for initiation um, you know, next year, unless you know we have consensus otherwise. But we'll start to talk about that in, in May. Uh, depot. We'll get going ASAP on that, and that's it. I'm a little disappointed. The meter map is really good, so wow. I'm a sucker for a good meter map. Yeah, it <laughs> should be. So we, and the Department of Health gal, and, and these are policies we can consider at any time, but um, so hey, do you guys have a meter testing program? <clears throat> We, Sarah will read the meter dumps monthly and see how many zeros there are, but we don't. So, you know, it's important for commercial work. Make sure you have the name using it very accurate. So just, there are services that can be provided or we can have secondary meters to just swap in, make sure they're tracking right. So lots of things. We're never going to um, stop worrying. Or assuming we can all the way right. Have you had any issues with the new meters going? I just got a new one. Not yet. I will learn no. to understand you much better if I can get familiar no. with the way you talk. I thought that was Sue talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, so the rule program things to add for water. I will be bringing forth a ton of water stuff. Uh, likely to be fit in the existing budget that may be different than what we had originally planned. In, Exterior of water tanks, interior inspections, you know, water hydrant cleaning the beans and other sources because it's 
fairly monotonous work that is not taking qualified specialties of being a firefighter. So those kinds of things. So, yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank I you. didn't hear your time. And I liked your little report thing you did too. Your yeah. little handout. I mean, I don't know what, what, what would I call it. Other than you know, you guys. Information brochure. Bro yeah, sure. Your PR piece. Yeah, we gotta have PR. I don't know what we do. Uh, a few minutes left. Uh, last yeah. item was uh, kind of an update on our retreat. I did turn into city administration oh, today our notes that, uh, that uh, I took with some feedback, uh, some updates from council members. I think the key uh, tonight that I just wanted to share, I, uh, there was a lot of items that we had on budget because we really talked a lot about budget and kind of how to wrap up from our first two year and how do we enter the other. And Nina, it, it, it's kind of a big list. And sometimes as, as you look, you go, well, is this the to-do list from council? It was our brainstorming. What we recognized and why we said we really want to work with finance, you can probably sit down with us and say, here's what will make it go smoother, that kind of negates half our list. So it really wasn't designed to say every one of these items need to be done. But it's important to note that, you know, some of those were things that we ran into that we said, hey, can we do better on, can we improve on this? Uh, think that simple things like, it's a two-year budget, but it was kind of one budget covering two years instead of a two-year budget and here's the first part. So I, there are probably things that, that you would do automatically or have a discussion. But I, I think it would be helpful to be able to sit down with finance and be able to talk about some of those because my notes don't reflect the intent necessarily. Right. So um, I know you have a lot going on and getting back up and running, but the two-year budget will be started pretty soon, coming up with sitting down saying what's our calendar look like right. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, as an example. We just have to have that space. Yeah. So it just seems like it's on top of this so quickly. So that was provided, one is I think it helped us to, to be able to provide some feedback. But it would be nice, ideally, to cow to just sit down with you and say, let's just talk about it. And maybe you can give us some ideas. This is what I think will help streamline it. Because we really do want to streamline. And it might be helpful for you to hear from council what we feel like we need to receive you know, it's not every line item, it, it's, you know, these are the key things we really want to look at. And if you know what those are, you can say, great, because I don't need to, to do all these others. So I think that's helpful to look at, but I think a conversation about it would be even more important. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I thought the list was great. There's a lot of really valid points on, on it, so it's definitely something we can work with. Uh, the last thing is just a, a schedule for our next retreat. Jody, did you have an opportunity at the staff? I meeting? sent you an email. Um, staff talked about what, because uh, you asked us to look at um, the latter half of February, and with some vacations and stuff, it, we, it looks like February 28th is going to be the best date for us. Okay, and are you gone then? I'm okay. gone January 28th. So. Oh, so February 28th, so Correct. at the end. So if we could have council just take a quick look before we adjourn here. Um, if you prefer, if you need to go home, that's fine. I just, the closer we can get to setting a date for us, so February 28th, that's almost like the last of the month. Um, my calendar doesn't even have a February 28th. <laughs> February 29th is the leap year, so we have one this year. I know. <laughs> so, so the 28th is Friday. Uh, how does that look for council members at this point? Here, I'm assuming during the day. Or, during is the it day. like a half day thing again? Or well, I, that's really up to council. I think last time we did this, we went from roughly 9, 9 30 to 3 or 3 30. Uh, you know, even if our hearts are in it for all day, our rear ends are usually good for just a few hours. Um, and it depends on the how aggressive we want to be on topics. I, I think that, um, you know, especially since budget is usually one of our <coughs> top things, if we could kind of focus on some of that, talk about how we'll set up for, for the next two year budget process, and then pick out a few other key items we want to talk about. I think we could probably, I, I would say it ought to be at least four hours, but um, but I think we could easily go from nine to three as well and make it six hours. So what do your schedules look like? 
Matt, you're the one I'm always concerned about because you've got oh, that whole thing where <laughs> well, I didn't say how much I care about you. It's really my mom. <laughs> but I do care. So okay, I, I don't have I, I, that works. I, I would sometimes Thursdays are better, but uh, but uh, I don't have anything on my calendar right now. Okay, so that would work. Other members, which we just go twenty eighth February twenty eighth is Thursday. Yeah. And the twenty seventh, if the Thursday is better too, that works for me as well. That okay. might be a packet. Yeah. Oh, which may or may not matter. Means it's, yeah. I could also make the twenty seventh work probably. Michelle, how about I think you? that's good. Yeah. Good for you, Dot. Should be fine unless the puppies have a lot. So. Uh, Nan, we're looking at dates for a, a council admin retreat, and we're talking about Friday, February 28th. Yeah. <laughs> Is that something we can have you look at? So we'll do that tentatively for Friday the 28th. Um, your quick feedback, how long would you like it to go? Are you good with four hours? Do you want to try more than that? That works for me. 27 yeah. works for staff as well if that's... Yeah, it's in the 27th for Yeah. So I'm coming back for my winter break. So just real quick, 27 for 28, Thursday or Friday? I'm good with either. I say 27. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I've got Rehab. Boy, I didn't miss that. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Reschedule that. 20, if you've got Rehab 27, 28, it's fine. Let's, let's do that. Yeah. That's fine. So the 28th, Thursday, Friday, 27, 28, Thursday, Friday, 27, 28, Thursday, Friday, 28, and I need him to go to rehab, so he's okay. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> okay. I get it. Yeah. yeah, that drinking problem. I <laughs> no, my hips do it a lot better, hopefully. I, so we'll shoot for the 28th, and if you'll give me the flexibility, I'll work with the administration on topics and try to decide how much. If you like staying in town, it certainly saves money and I have it some sandwich. Yeah. And yeah. We can do it at the New All Business Center. Joyce, can you check for us? Are we good? Yes. Okay, our meeting is adjourned.